Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to discuss a very specific topic brought to my attention by a Facebook friend, Robert, of Mason Dixon Photography. He's got some absolutely beautiful stuff here. Uh, I like the composites that he does. Um, he's really got a sculptor's mentality of photography. The way he uh, captures the light is absolutely brilliant. I do believe he has a sculptor background as well, uh, which you can definitely see in his work. Uh, makes for some very brilliant com uh, composites. But he had asked me um, what I uh, what I had thought about the tone module in Topaz Adjust 5. Now, um, what I want to do is talk about first, because um, a lot of this is going to deal with cross-processing, is how I cross-process and my thought process behind cross-processing and how I think a successful cross-process photo works in this new digital age. Um, so what you're looking at here is the color wheel, the RGB color wheel, red, green, blue color wheel. And uh, this is basically based off the old color wheel. Uh, new color wheel is cyan, magenta, and um, yellow. but <clears throat> For, for argument's sake, we'll just go with the old color wheel since we all seem to know that from childhood. So the old color wheel goes with primary colors being yellow, red, and blue. Your secondary colors would be orange, um, violet, and green, and then your tertiary colors are going to be red, orange, um, red, violet, blue, violet, blue, green, yellow, green, and yellow, orange, respectively. Now, how... Um, Complementary colors work. If you're not familiar with complementary colors, they're basically anything on the opposite sides of the color wheel. So the complement of purple is yellow, the complement of green is red, the complement of orange is blue, and so on and so forth. You get into the tertiary colors, you're going to have uh, yellow, orange, and blue, violet being uh, uh, complements of each other. So keep that in mind when we go through this process because I want to show you something and how I how I think that works very well. Uh, keep in mind, complementary colors work well together because they complement one another. Uh, when used together, they can be very effective in your artwork. And if you think like an artist when you're post-processing your photographs, you'd be surprised just how much better they're going to turn out. So with them is, this image here is the one we're going to be working with for the tone uh, module in Topaz Adjust 5. So I'm going to go to Filter. Topaz Labs and Topaz Adjust 5. And I'm going to go ahead and reset all. So I don't want to get too far into anything but the tone settings here because anyone who knows me pretty well knows that I take a very long time to discuss something very small. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself with anything else. All right. We're going to go into finishing touches and go to tone. Make sure that the tone checkbox is marked. Um, the, the thing that I, I don't really care for in the manuals and even when hovering over each one of these color regions uh, you get that little what is this block when you right click what is this it says displays the parameter controls that users can uh, use to adjust the various effects um, not very helpful uh, at all in my opinion um, it doesn't really go into what color region one is what color region two is what color region three or four is it says the same thing for everything you go to their manual same thing it tells you you can adjust color region one two three and four but it doesn't really go into what color region one two three and four respectively are which i think is extremely important so in order to in order to really see it you're going to have to click on each individual one of these color regions and we're going to do something really ugly to it but just just work with me here so, click on Color Region 1's block. I'm going to change it to bright red and move this all the way up so that this is a bright red color. Notice how some of the colors start to change here. Color Region 2, I'm going to make bright yellow. Color Region 3, I'm going to make bright blue. And Color Region 4, I'm going to make bright magenta. Now, the tone strength is what's going to affect, is going to be like the overall strength of the tone, uh, tones that you've applied to each different color region. So, still kind of confused about this color region thing. It'll, it'll click real soon. When you move the, the tone strength all the way down to the bottom, it gets really ugly and really nasty and does not look very good. But that's okay, because this does a very important thing for us. It shows us exactly which color regions are being affected and what that color is doing to that color region. Now, I like to keep these color regions as a stair step, and I'll show you why in a second. But look at 
what color region won the reds. If you look at the dark areas in this photograph, let's look at the before and after. This is really giving me a headache looking at that nasty color, but um, you can see all the reds are being affected in the dark stone areas. All the yellows are affecting from color region two um, our midtones. Before and after again, our color region three is starting to affect all of our mid highlights and our color region four is affecting our bright uh, highlights. So if we look at these, color region one is essentially our darkest darks. Color region two is our um, middle darks. Color region three is our middle lights and color region four is our very bright lights. Now, where this gets tricky and why I like to keep this in this stair step uh, position here is if you cross over color region one to beyond color region two, um, it it uh, switches basically. Um, we we lose everything from color region one at this point. So if you see when you move color region one to color region two, um, just before you cross into it, you're showing a lot of red and less yellow in those um, in those mid uh, uh, mid shadow areas. Same thing here, if we go color region 3 into color region 4, we're increasing the amount of blue before we get to the magenta, and then once we get to the magenta, cross over it, uh, it crosses over our colors, and I don't really care for that too much. So I'd like to keep these in that stair step and not move color region 1 beyond uh, color region 2, Not do not move color region 2 beyond color region 3 beyond color region 4. Now, I don't know what Topaz Lab suggests, but this is my suggestion. What I also don't suggest is really going anything beyond 0 0.90 or 0 0.80 on the uh, tone strength. I would stay between there. 0.85 is a good area to start with. Now, where this comes into play, we talked about color region 1 being your darkest darks and color region 4 being your lightest lights. So what I'm going to do with this image is um, we talked about our complementary colors before. So I'm going to take the most predominant uh, color uh, can't speak right now. I'm going to take the most predominant uh, light complementary color, which would be yellow, and find its complement, which would be purple, as we looked at that chart before. I'm going to give purple to the dark areas and yellow to the light areas. So if I go in here, color region one, and make this like a bright purple, or I guess I, the, the proper nomenclature would be uh, violet. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with color region two. And then with color region 3 and 4, because they're lighter, I'm going to use the lighter complementary color in those areas. So you can see I'm already getting a pretty nice cross-process effect here by using those complementary colors uh, together. So if we move this up, the effect starts to diminish. If we move it all the way up, we don't have any tone setting happening whatsoever. If we move it all the way down, again, we get that ugly nastiness. So I'm going to keep that between 0.8 and 0.9. And now we can do the same thing here. Um, our, our most predominant uh, dark other complementary color would be something like blue. So take that blue and that blue. And then with the yellow, maybe change that to orange and see if we like it. Now, you don't have to stick to these primary color, or sorry, these uh, complementary colors. Again, it's just, a, it's just a recommendation because they already complement each other. They've been doing it their entire life. They love to complement each other. And that's just what they do. We can do the same thing with red and green. But if you happen to see that you like the reds being where they are, and, and uh, with the oranges, go right ahead. You're more than welcome to do that as well. I don't really care too much for the red and green in this particular image. I actually prefer the yellow and the purple. And one more. All right, so now we talked about crossing in over regions. If we want to make the purple, uh, the dark areas stand out just a little bit more in this cross process image, go to color region one and just move that over until your darks start to shine through right here. So before that was kind of like a pale, pale dark. If I move this over, it'll start to shine through there a little bit. Don't want it to get too dark too quick, so I'll leave it about right there. Same thing with color region two. If we want that uh, mid-tone area to be a little bit more, I don't really care for that. You can move it closer to color region three. 
for this particular image, I want it to be a little bit lower. But you see how you can uh, adjust this cross process effect pretty easily here. So I'm going to move this more to 0.9. That's more my speed, I think. And maybe just a little bit more right there. Okay, good. So here's our before, here's our after using the tones to affect it. Now, you, and I said before, you do not have to stick strictly to complementary colors. I just think they work very well together. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Blake Rudis. This is everydayhdr.com. You can follow me on Facebook at Blake Rudis. Um, you can also email me at uh, everydayhdr at gmail.com if you'd like to make a suggestion like Robert from Mason Dixon Photography did here. Thank you, Robert. I think this is something that a lot of people can learn from, especially in the Topaz community. Have a great weekend, everyone.